working today. So, uh, so John, I uh, first off, I want to make sure I, I'm going to be sharing various um, some visuals. So, if people want to get a hold of you, uh, they can go to Cheplack Live. Uh, I got John here. I've known John since I think 2000. 10, 11 ish, back at my exit realty days. Um, wow. Is that about right? Is it, wow, it was exit, huh? Yeah, it was exit. Uh, so, um, and I have a special guest, as I mentioned, I got Anthony, my oldest here. And, and uh, John, your post today nailed it. I mean, that's, that's why I wanted to have you on. I mean, you coach some of the top, you know, agents, teams, I mean, you know, top uh, REMAX agent in the United States team. Um, same thing in Canada. Coach, CEO of Remax, some some really big uh, named folks, and one of the things I love about you is you know you don't live in a rearview mirror syndrome. You had some turbulence in your life, you overcame it. I mean the mental toughness, um, you know, to to deal with what's ahead, and uh, what better uh, timing I guess in this unprecedented time of turbulence that we're going through. Many agents and I have a lot of people that will watch this replay that aren't even in the real estate industry that have a lot of uncertainty, the unemployment, the furloughs, you know, uh, I, I heard that, you know, we're going to have twice amount of people die uh, this year because of starvation than normal, normal years. So, uh, you know, having mental toughness, a uh, positive mindset, uh, routines, systems, um, this is even more important than ever. Um, so that's why I know it's, it's not live. I mean, we tried about 10 times. So that's, that's why um, even more so now than ever, it's, you know, I think that's paramount. I want my son on here because, you know, they're doing e-learning, John, and they're going nuts. I mean, they're done with school at 9, 10 a.m. They have a lot of time, but my wife teaches, uh, so she's doing e-learning and I'm, I'm working. So, you know, talk about sports psychologists, you know, Lisa Hayes once said, be careful how you talk to yourself because you are listening. I mean, this is kind of why I think your message, although it might not be luxury based, it applies to all price points of, of real estate. It applies to everything, whether you're an entrepreneur, you're an employee, you're a mom, a dad, a husband, wife, or a 10 year old. And so, um, that, you know, I know you're highly regarded. I had Ann Miller who ran, runs the luxury division for Remax, and she was scared straight when she saw you were going to be a guest because she knew you were going to set the bar high. I said, oh. "Ann, the good news is John's after you." <laughs> so she's um, a neat lady. What a neat yeah, lady. Yeah, she's great. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you know, tell us a little bit about yourself, and and talk to me a little bit about you know how you're pivoting and and you're coaching up some of these top teams and agents, and and what your your message is and. From time to time, John, I might show uh, a couple different things in the backdrop. Please don't let it be a distraction. Uh, for those of you that are watching this replay, this is, uh, I guess, our next five guests. Uh, we do these every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same time, same place. Uh, they stream live on Facebook. This is the first one that isn't streaming live, uh, but we're going to be showing the replay. So, uh, John, uh, floor is yours. Tell us a little bit about you and, and talk to us a little bit about here we are, May of Oh, that's loud, buddy. Here we are, May of 2020, and what words of advice would you have? Sure. Well, um, well, 32 years in the business, and the one thing that I share with people is that I don't know that I'm the sharpest tool in the shed. As a matter of fact, I publicly share with people that those that I'm so fortunate to work with, um, as you mentioned uh, so kindly, and every one of them is probably a lot smarter than me. Um, I, I know they are. Um, I've just... I've, I've hung around, I've had a lot of experience, you know, as a, as an agent, as an operator, um, you know, a lot of the coaching and, and, and I think, you know, all kinds of coaches are great. Um, but you've got different types of coaches. You have, um, you have researchers, people who just research and, and, and then, you know, give what they've learned, which is great. Um, and, and then curators that bring people together, which is brilliance too. I was taught to, you know, always raise the IQ of an organization or a group of people by bringing smart people together. And then there's a results-based um, coach, which I am. I, I've been in the trenches. You know, I've, I've led a company through the dot-com bubble, which a lot of people don't talk about. They don't remember 99 to 2002 um, when that happened, you know, and I've, I've been in this business and coaching and, you know, I've done the 0809 thing, did 9-11. Um, and, uh, you know, what's really interesting is, is I think that uh, uh, 
what I found over time and, 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 and today, and it's been really my mantra is although things have changed, everything is really, really the same. There are people that are pivoting um, and shifting, et cetera. And I don't know. Um, I think for me personally, I don't know that I've pivoted a whole bunch. Um, is, is there, and, and I don't know that um, a lot of my clients that have, have really pivoted or shifted maybe they've 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 been more intent and intense in 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 the online experience they okay. were all very very as you know they're very very tech savvy very advanced and so they've shifted more to zoom which they've always used uh, i'm sure you've got more virtual showings but um you know i sold home sight unseen before there was video, I think, with pictures and things. I mean, when you really think about it, I mean, I've got uh, clients that have worked with the military and have sold numerous homes um, virtually long before this happened. And so, although there is, is pivoting taking place, here, here's what I would say, say that stayed the same, is making fast, responsible decisions, period. That's number one, fast, responsible decisions and taking immediate action. And ultimately, to get through these times, that's a, that's a must. But for them to be front runners, that's how they always did their business. Now, what are fast, responsible decisions? And everything has a, a definition of duality. The first thing that we immediately, a couple things that we first immediately did in, in my clients when, okay, all right, <laughs> you know, the kitchen's on fire. And being in the industry for a long time, you, you know when the kitchen's on fire. And listen, I'm not in the predicting business, but I can do math. Some common sense can tell us, you know, uh, what can happen. So the, we, we got right into making responsible budgeting decisions responsible budgeting decisions. Um, one of them being in, in marketing, because as you know, the folks I work with, they have, the, you know, some of them have budgets for their teams that are bigger than regions of real estate companies. Yeah. Period. I mean, they're mega. Um, and so, although they didn't pull all the way back, what they did is they made, you know, some did, some, everyone did. You know, you've got some people that have, you know, such a strong brand that they could pull away real heavy from other things and not be impacted. Um, there were others that uh, went all in. I mean, I have a client, you know, when this hit, saw everyone going down, bought 50 Zillow zip codes. Man. Went all in. Most people are pulling back. They're selling one, two, three, five, 50 zip codes. He's buying them. Yeah, they got out of them. Got out of them. No, not taking Zillow, Zillow buying them all. So, so, but ultimately, but, but here's the thing to look at, I think that, um, because there's not a sweeping, I mean, here's the sweeping commentary and approach is fast, responsible decisions, immediate action. And for everyone based on um, their, their financial resource, the position they were in, they make their decisions based on that too. So those are all the things you have to look at. But I think, um, and, and then the other part was too, but, and, and I wouldn't say it's a big pivot or shift with, with my people and, and maybe not for many others, but I think it is because I've kind of watched the language. It was all of a sudden we need to speak with empathy. There was this freak out and I'm like, that's what I've been talking about the whole time, man. Everyone wants to buy, no one wants to be sold. And so for, for my people that, you know, what I found is, is, is certainly there was some shift in language you know, one of the marketing principles, you know, so well, you're one of the best marketers in the industry is meeting people where they're at, entering the conversation going on in their head. You know, I mean, I like Brendan Bouchard, who's brilliant. And I look up to says, well, you know, I don't believe in the media, the conversation going on in their head. There's aren't, there aren't conversations going on in people's head that you just go grab it. There's things they're experiencing, but that's the principle to it. And so uh, the thing to look at in interacting with the consumer, what's going on? Well, the number one thing to look at is, is you look at the emotion of people, not whether they want to buy or sell. Um, it could be logical based on someone's personal decision to, so say for example, someone's recruiting to, or, or, or someone is thinking about joining another company. It's really logical for them right now. It would be logical because if I went to XYZ, it'd be good, but they have uncertainty because of the circumstance around them. That's an emotion. Human beings cannot make a logical decision when there's an emotional block. 
Same with the consumer, right? When you look at the consumer, the consumer's ability to make a logical decision gets paralyzed when there is an emotional block. So the one thing that has always been in the real estate industry and most all sales is sales skepticism and, and, and the mistake our industry's made and where I, I argue against this, you know, cheesy outdated sales dialogues and objection handlers that really continue to work against the ranking of us as, <clears throat> as professionals. You know, with that, what I've always taught is you need to, to lower sales skepticism. You can't sell someone out of it or objection handle them out of it. You must lower their guard. You lower people's guards by educating and informing, not always being the in-your-face salesperson. Well, then we had about 60 days ago, roughly, we had this uh, other emotional experience on top of sales skepticism, which is already there, which most agents I think in the way that they market, I think in the way that they interact and communicate, um, don't even encounter that the right way. Then you had uncertainty. So now you've got an emotion. Well, can you objection handle? So, so we're looking at all things. You're looking at uh, a team leader or broker owner manager that's still talking to recruit prospects who now has uncertainty. So you're going to sell them out of uncertainty. You're going to objection handle them out of that. No wrong. And so it's really what my clients have done is what they've always done and what we always believe in, although they're geniuses in the science of business, it's been like, okay, we just go to those deeper waters of the human experience because, um, and there's nothing wrong with being transactional with your business. Sure. Uh, but but most of the people I work with are um, it's not really transactional. They understand that we don't focus on the transaction; we focus on the human beings that do the transactions. So uncertainty was the energy running around. Well, how do you you sell an objection handle? No, what you do is you reassure people. So it's unpacking that reassurance. Well, watch this basic human behavior, which we've always believed in nurture, looking at nurture, though, not from the perspective of sell, but to encourage care for and support. Then we look at empathy, which, you know, as you know, Mike, be in the business a long time. Yeah. Everyone talks about empathy, but what's it really mean? Well, what it means is to co-experience how someone's feeling. And so just bringing that Walk in their shoes, so to speak, like, right. Being, being relatable, mm -hmm. being relatable. And so, so really from, from a tactical space and where I call it more of a psychological tactics versus what do we do with leads and this and that? Yeah, we made responsible decisions with budgets. Some people spending way more because it was the right strategic move. Other people spending less, but still growing their profits through it. But the ultimate foundation for everyone is walking through this with people where they're at and they're in a space of uncertainty. Now to do that though, and this is where it comes down to how do you do your business, but you can't do your business until you do you, right? Um, is emotional maturity and emotional intelligence, what people call, you know, maybe people call it mindset, but, but underneath mindset is emotional maturity, emotional intelligence. And as we were chatting beforehand, that's those, you know, all the things talk about their, their routines and their, their daily schedule and their, their rituals. Um, it's, it's really recognizing that to, to do all those things that I'm talking to you about is being more focused on your person than ever before, ever before. And the irony of it, Mike, which is very interesting, is and I'm not a doctor, so I just go with the information that I have, is the number one person that is most vulnerable is someone who either has a, you know, a, like my daughter has a heart condition, right? She was born with it. You know, it's people with those conditions or people that honestly haven't taken care of themselves. Uh -huh. and, 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 it's, and it's just the reality. And, and anyone who doesn't take care of themselves, whether they're in in the current environment we're in, or whether it's normal environment, they're at risk every day for something happening. Happening. So it's, it's been, quite frankly, it's been more of a holistic approach because 
um, if you're going to get through something like this that is emotionally taxing, which then in turn impacts a business, it's got to be a holistic approach. How you counsel and interact with a buyer, or a seller, or a consumer, how you interact, counsel, interact with the people that you lead. And that requires a messaging that I've always said doesn't work. It can, sure, it can work, but it can't endure. You look at people that, that use the outdated um, external decisioning process versus, you know, really almost like a, a, where it can be this, like selling hard versus the internal decisioning process, allowing people to self-discover, um, uh, uh, being in it for the need of the person you're working with, versus your outcome to get a commission. And it's all things we've talked about, yeah. but I can tell you, I mean, really in its simplest of terms, that's what uh, is working today um, and has always worked. Now in the meantime, I'm watching people flip. Oh my gosh, we've got a, well, sure. Because I think they weren't doing it the right way all along. Sure. That's my opinion. What's your opinion on the, the news, positive or negative? I think it's all BS. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I, I always tell agents, and I'm going to fast forward down to this, is I, I when I speak to crowds, I say, garbage in, garbage. Now, I might lead them with the image, but people say garbage out. And I said, no, garbage in, garbage stays. I said, think about all the negativity out there. You know, John, there was a, a young man that, that you know, w was, was killed in uh, Georgia in February, and the, the, the father and son were just charged with murder, you know, and I... I it was his birthday today. So there's a lot of posts and I post about it too, but I, I, you know, there's so much negativity out there. And then I think the news wants to divide and they want to label us red state, blue state, uh, you know, Democrat, Republican, African American, you know, Hispanic American, whatever. And, you know, we're all about lifting people up, right. And, and being empathetic. Um, and so, you know, your, your post today, I thought, hit the nail on the head. And I think more so now than ever, and correct me if I'm wrong, because there's people that are used to going to their office, now they're working from the house, and there's extra stress levels because of that, because of e-learning and mom and dad are working, or husbands used to having the house to himself and work from home, and now the wife's there, or vice versa. Um, you know, what, you know, what words, um, uh, an advice would you have, or, you know, I call it my uh, win at home series. We always ask this question for, for our guests is, you know, what are you finding? Uh, maybe not you personally, um, based on where you're at, but, but, you know, what are some of your top agents or teams doing to adapt and pivot and work from a different environment? Maybe it's the home environment when they're used to, you know, being able to shut the door and, and, and have no distractions. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to acknowledge, um, and, I, and I'm always going to lean this way, and I have amazing men that I work with that what's really neat about these men that I work with that are, you know, you got from Adam Contos, CEO of Remax Worldwide, who I get the privilege of coaching, to Gary, who you mentioned, who's number one in the world, number one in the U.S., um, and, and Justin, who's number one in Canada. Um, and, and many other men, but, um, but, but, but I just mentioned those men amongst the others. They're so supportive of the women that I work with. Um, but I want to, I want to go out to the, the, the women. First of all, I mean, imagine these, these entrepreneurial women, and you look in our industry, you know, um, the Veronica's their, their moms, their wives, and, and then they're these powerful business leaders. First thing I'd share is, is, is look at them. I mean, you know, good artists cheat, great artists copy. I mean, um, what I see is, is, listen, is it easy for them? No, but you, you find I mean, some of them single moms with, with two little ones and they're homeschooling and having record months, Mike, record months in environments that are, if you were to look at the statistics, if you will, um, are, are, are impacted at a super, super high level. And so first thing I would do is, is, is look for someone that you see is, is doing really well and just ask them what they're doing. Because if you look at the group of leaders that I get to work with, that's what they all did. See, we all had a choice to do nothing, do it alone or do it with others. And the people that grow or get through things 
that are challenging, they do it with others. Now it's going to require your grit and your commitment. But um, I come back to what I had talked about is um, uh, number one, what my uh, leaders are doing is uh, they're taking what we've always believed in, in community and they're bringing people even closer. Um, uh, actually connecting with them more than they had. And, and, and to say that they weren't connecting enough with their people, I wouldn't say that because uh, none of my clients, uh, as we record this or months, I mean, for the last year, have had massive retention issues, which you always look at in an organization, whether a team yeah. or a large brokerage. So they've always connected with their people. Um, at a good level, because if you're not connected with your people, you're not going to retain them. I don't care what your model is. It's not about the model. It's the community. You know, um, you know, I get to work with a, a Dan Beer who's, who's in a different one. Dan's in an EXP. Gary and Deborah are in, are in a Remax model and two different models. But they both of those organizations, they lead from a space of community. So I would say the, the biggest thing that they're doing outside of, you know, the normal Okay, great. We need to do things more virtually. They are are connecting with their people at even deeper levels than they ever have before. Now, watch this. At the same time, what I would say, and hopefully leaders get this for traveling through this time at any time, is walking that constant tightrope of leadership between tension and stress. So in other words, um, respecting the fact that, you know, how far do I push? That's the real art in leadership. How hard do I push and who do I push? Well, you've got to have high level emotional intelligence and maturity and be attached to the human's experience more than the transaction. Because if you're attached to the transaction, you're not, you're not going to be able to have a pulse on it. You're going to be jaded in how you interact with people. So first of all, it's what are you attached to the humans? Then it's constantly growing your understanding of human beings. And then the final piece is meeting them where they're at, seeing where they're at. In, in some cases, there are some people that have just, that were very productive, that uh, maybe people on a team or in a brokerage have just totally dropped off because it's totally overwhelmed them, um, offering the support or guiding them on where to get the support, but at the same time, not judging them. Um, yet then there's, then there's recognizing what group of people you're leading right now. And, and maybe I'm talking to someone right now who's sitting here that are just, you know, there's just unknown and uncertainty and knowing to nudge them, knowing to give them that, that, that certainty um, that can get them, you know, back into momentum, into the fold and feeling confident in uncertain time. And then there's that third group that, that just the freaking savages that it, it's like, you know, they're not, reckless abandon not caring what's going on but emotionally there's like hey listen man, these are tough times and these are changing times but i've got responsibilities in my life and, and you know what else on top of the responsibilities the consumer has needs out there so so it's those approaches in leadership but knowing yeah. in leadership you got to take care of yourself yeah uh, you know to, to circle back to you, you, that second uh, type of group of people it's for those of you that are parents out there, right? I mean, or you've coached sports before. You can't coach all kids the same way. You can't parent, right? I have my oldest son that was just here. You know, he, he's got a different personality type than our middle son. And, and so knowing your team, knowing your organization, having that um, uh, a knowledge of, you know, their why and what's important to them because they're mo everybody's motivated by, you know, different, for different reasons. Right. And just like, you know, Bobby Knight as a coach, he could yell at some players and he had to put his arm around others. Um, and so th that comes from knowing your team members, also your clients, right? There's some clients out there, John, some sellers I work, you know, with agents that focus more on the listing side, but they work with buyers as well. And yeah. knowing your sellers, different sellers have different needs and need, you need to communicate with them differently based, you know, I'm a big disc personality guy and a lot of people in the real estate industry understand disc, but there's Myers-Briggs, there's Colby, uh, there's, you know, others out there. Um, so I, I just wanted to, and then you said the savages, right? Those are the D's, those are the drivers, those are the people that are focused on results, right? They want to win. And uh, my wife calls a D something else, but you can figure it out. But the point is they're so focused on that, 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 that finish line, the goal, 
um, that sometimes they can run pe rub people the wrong way, but they are they are driven. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's yeah, and it's interesting, you know. And again, it, it's very interesting because leadership is like marketing. You know, and, and you know, a marketing cliche I'd shared earlier. Not a cliche. It's a principle. You know, meet people where they're at, enter the conversation going on in their head because we're trying to enroll people into our product or service. We're trying to enroll them to take action. Well, isn't that what leadership is? You can't make someone do something, so you've gotta meet each person where they're at. But what you also gotta be willing to do though too, which is the tough part, is that they call it tough love. I call it just operating in principle and, and, and being able to you know, let someone know that, hey, I'm not helping you by continuing to help someone that doesn't wanna take action. Or, or um, my helping you and telling you just to do more, which many leaders fall into. And I understand because a lot of people that evolved in leadership in our industry didn't have true leadership training, right? And so it's that, and, and, and many of the leaders are these, you know, and so it's like, how come you don't do it? Think, listen, act the way I do. You know, it's interesting on my coaching calls with leaders is I always remind them, I say, remember your blind spot. And it's why your leader is, is the, um, the people you lead don't hear, listen, think, process, or act the same way you do. You know? Blind spot. That, that's, a, that's a great analogy on the way to work today. You know, my son and I stopped at Chick-fil-A and I was talking about blind spot. You know, he's got a little dirt bike, and, and, but blind spot in business, right? So kind of, you, you know, SWOT analysis, strength and weakness, right? You understand that's, is that the blind spot, the weakness? Yeah, it is that 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 one's almost an epidemic, and 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 they know it though because they're all brilliant. I mean, the the, the folks I work with and where they're at in their business, they 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 know it. But um, and just like myself, I I coach and teach it. it doesn't mean I have it all right. Right. But but um, I can catch myself too, going. Wait a minute. You know what? Didn't you just coach someone on that? And you're behaving yeah. that way right now. You know, it's yeah. called being human. Yeah, so. it's being human and, and being, you know, being real, right? Analysis, taking a look at your, yourself in an unbiased way. And that's difficult. Sometimes you got to have others point out those, right? And poke holes in a business plan or your blind spots or, or whatever it might be. Just a quick thing for, again, we're doing a replay. So all of you that are watching this, you can always watch our other replays of Luxury Lunch and Learn every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We stream it live to this Facebook group, but the replays will be there. And uh, again, we have... Uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, same place. A couple things that I want to uh, say, John, before we uh, continue on. We are um, giving away um, some, some freebies um, on each of these. So the first thing is uh, uh, Brad Inman. We had Brad Inman on and they're doing their Inman Connect Now, a live digital event, uh, June 2nd through the 4th. And we're gonna be giving away uh, tickets to that. So if you are interested in a free ticket, uh, do me a favor. Uh, you either have to A, share the replay of this training, or B, uh, make a comment or ask myself a question. I know we're not doing it live. That's one of the things we would do is ask John and myself a live question. But if you share this or you ask a question in the feed, um, then uh, we will count that uh, towards the, uh, the raffle we're going to have where we'll be giving away um, three tickets over the next three weeks uh, to the Inman Connect Now event, and that's uh, compliments of Brad Inman. Uh, the last free thing I want to give away is those of you that are looking to increase your average sale price, we're giving away a 56-point video checklist and our luxury blueprint. All you have to do is text the word luxury to that number, and that's also, if you do either one of those, uh, you'll be entered in to the drawing. So John, um, how do you feel 2008, I hate to use this word downturn, but how do you feel like 2008 uh, is different than what we're going through right now in 2020? Well, I'm like everyone else in that, um, I mean, sure it's a circumstance with the, the circumstances are different. And, you know, I can argue both points. I can argue it's gonna be like it. I can argue it's not going to be like it, right? Um, because it's, it's interesting to see that the, um, and, 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 and what I'm seeing is too, in, in some markets where people are just crushing it, you know, my clients are, um, I think that, uh, you know, again, it has been shared a, a bajillion times. The equity position of people, um, is, is, um, very different yet. Yeah, there's a statistic that people haven't watched though, too 
is the percentage, and, and maybe I saw the right graph, maybe I didn't. Um, you know, A, here's for it. You know, the equity positions of people right now is unlike ever before, right? Well, but B, you know, people talk in generalities, but I don't know if they've looked at the numbers, the percentage of cash out refis. Well, go look at the charts and, 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 and how steep they were uh, in, 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 in the last financial crisis. And in, in the last chart I saw, that, that, that how steep the charts were for us for, for cash out refis. Yeah. And, and it, 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 was, it was on the same trajectory. Um, I think that, um, I think there's a lot of signs. I think interest rates are going to stay good, but I really don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know how, what is it, 30 million people laid off right now? Yeah, it's over 30 million people. Yeah, here's what I'd say. I think it's too, un, and, and I'm not playing, um, uh, and, and I'm attached to, my income is attached to a real estate transaction. I coach real estate people. Um, I just think it's too unpredictable. I mean, you've got the stimulus money. Okay, what happens when, okay, people have got money, all right? Okay, so what happens? And then you've got forbearance, okay? And you've got people with unemployment. Well, I think we'll get a really good indicator in, 90, in, in about 90, 120 days. I don't, yeah. I, don't know that, I don't know that I have enough information. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm an optimist, right? I mean, I believe life is what drives real estate. I remember back in 2008, I'm a big Dan Kennedy, you know, uh, guy. And Dan mm -hmm. used to talk about how he, he refused to partake in, in this new economy, right? So again, a lot of it was just mindset. But I think life is what drives my business. And you're coaching top, you know, CEOs and, 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 and top teams. And people are getting married. People are relocating. There's going to be people that realize, man, I need two home offices or I want to be out of the city downtown Chicago man they're on lockdown lockdown galore the, the mayor is like you know uh, don't get me started on that but my point is I think there's going to be a lot of people out there in the city that realize you know what I want a yard I want I don't want common areas I don't want to be in this condo I want to you know and so I think there's going to be a lot of lifestyle changes for people based on a second wave whether it be this COVID-19 or something in five ten years I think you're going to see people that uh, are going to reevaluate what's important in, in a home. And I think that's going to help the housing market in, in many ways as well. Yeah, well, I, I, I agree. I, I don't know. Um, I think that uh, what I see right now, what, what may be different is I, I am, you know, versus 0809 is I'm seeing people um, break records, um, have break sales records, like right in the heat of this thing. Um, Nick McLean, who's Nick, just, yeah, 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 West um, Coast, yeah, uh, he, oh, you ready? Working, right? No, 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 no. Oh, oh, I'm thinking Nick Shivers. Uh, where's yeah. Nick out of McLean? He's in Wenatchee. So, you ready for this? So, Washington State, you know, they, they're the first media, the first case, stop right. the world, yeah. They, uh, there were 65 sales in his marketplace, little tiny market. So, those sales are down, right. His team sold 37 of them. Jeez. So, what, so 60%. Yeah, yeah. 60% market share. Uh huh. And, and he's going to keep climbing. Uh, you know, so I can't predict. Do I, A, we're America. We always come out the other side. We always come stronger. That's my belief. Um, um, you, you know, not get into what people think about politics. Yeah. We've always had politics and that crap goes on, but we're Americans and, and we just, you know, we fight through things. Um, I think there's that, um, could it dip? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the stats shows it could, could it be as bad as, as 0809? I don't know. Um, there, you can argue for, you can argue against, um, I, I see a lot of positivity. Here's what I would say though, to, um, anyone that's a real estate agent or a real estate leader is, uh, and it's not the cliche of, you know, the biggest, you know, um, largest amount of wealth exchanges hands in these times. Well, it is the truth. Um, let me tell you something. Uh, I'm seeing massive growth take place with the high performers um, big time. I mean, summer, uh, you know, there's two things. I think, I think hey, it's very, very um, honorable and respectful as a business person to survive through something like this, you know, um, and, and yet at the same time, I'm watching some people really, really grow. Um, yeah. so, but, but it is, it's just the, um, so what I would say though is, is here's what it's, here's what it's calling everyone to do is to get better. 
um, including me, be a better coach, be a better person, be a better friend, be, uh, um, you know, be a better real estate agent, be a better real estate leader, a better CEO, all of us. And so what I know is the people that are obsessed with, the, you know, the simple things, just that are going to win. Um, I think it's a managing your emotions. You can, I think uh, hopefully some people will, because there's some people right now that were good business owners. And I can, I can tell you, they're in a jam financially right now because they weren't operating a good business. You know, they could go get the, tro you know, get all the awards and this and look good top line. But, you know, were you running a good business, making fiscally responsible decisions, having some reserves? You know, I think there's there's some good education, unfortunately. Lessons and, learned, right? Lessons sure. Lessons learned. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I think. Then. Yeah. Well, I'm wearing a shirt today. Every, every time I do these trainings, I wear different shirts and I try to pick out something that... Uh, coincides with the guest and uh, it's the same uh, as the sign behind me prove them wrong because I know you had some ups and downs and turbulence and I really appreciate all you're doing I have a slide up right now for anybody that wants more information about connecting with John you've got that's some great coaching uh, you do masterminds uh, once things that does settle and we can go moving around again um, they can find out more information correct John at just check black live yeah that's good yep. yeah that's awesome um, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, again, uh, for those of you, we are doing a replay right now. All our replays are going to be on our Facebook group. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel with just this. Uh, you can go to Marketing Luxury Group on YouTube. If you are interested in a free ticket to the Inman event, uh, go ahead and either share this replay or uh, write a comment, or you can text in luxury to this phone number. Again, keep raising the bar in real estate. Uh, again, make people's day lift others up as opposed to uh, drag them down. My name is Michael Ofito. John, thank you, buddy. Thanks, bud. Have All a good right, one. Peace. All right, you too.